So I'm going to walk you through the circulatory system and I want to talk a little bit about uh, pulmonary circulation and then I want to talk about sy general systemic circulation as well. So we'll, we'll go through the pulmonary circuit and then we'll go through the systemic circuit. The easiest place to start, in my opinion, almost always, is right here. Superior vena cava and coming up from here, inferior vena cava, which would be leading right here. Superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, right where my pointer is, are going to be carrying deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. From the right atrium, that deoxygenated blood is going to go to the right ventricle, up the pulmonary trunk, and then branch out the pulmonary arteries into the lungs. So what happens in the lungs? This is where gas exchange takes place. We drop off carbon dioxide, we pick up oxygen, and we come back on these. You'll see red here, you'll see red here. These are pulmonary veins. Remember, arteries away from the heart, veins to the heart. So oxygenated blood now is coming into the right, pardon me, left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta. Now, at the top of the aortic arch here, you'll see one, two, three tubes coming off. We call this the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid, and the left subclavian. So the left subclavian artery, let me follow this one first, is going to do just that. It's going to come up like this, You'll see it here as well in red, and it's going to go under the clavicle, subclavian. This one is going to go out and feed the left arm. Right here, we have left common carotid. That left common carotid is going to come up like this. When you check your pulse in your neck, right, boom, 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 like that. That's your left common carotid that you're feeling. And what's going to happen here is... You're going to see this one actually start to branch over and over and over, but one of the places it's going to go and feed is into your brain. So it's going to lead up to your head. So we have one tube leading out to your arm. We call that left subclavian. We have one tube leading up to your brain. That's left common carotid. The first one I mentioned here, though, the brachiocephalic trunk, Listen to the name, brachiocephalic. Brachio comes from the term brachium. Brachium means arm. Cephalo means head. So what happens here, in fact, if I take off, if I take off sternocleomastoid, we can probably get a little bit of a better view here. That brachiocephalic trunk is gonna branch into two and feed the same two places that we fed on the left side here, to the arm and to the head. So what happens? Sure enough, on the right-hand side, we have right subclavian artery. And again, this is going to go under the clavicle. That's going to go and feed the right arm here. We also have right common carotid artery. That's this red one right here. Right common carotid, that's going to, again, if you check your pulse, boom, 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 on your neck, on your right side, you're going to feel that one going up and feeding your brain. When, so that's feeding, that's basically feeding the top side of your head, top side of your body. When we have that aortic arch following all the way through, if I remove the heart from this one, you can actually see now in red the descending aorta. And that descending aorta in this region is called the descending thoracic aorta. Once we pass through the diaphragm here, we are now in the Still aorta, but we call this the descending abdominal aorta because this is the abdominal region. You can see the kidneys here, for example. At some point, this is going to split into the common iliac arteries, and you can see those iliac arteries, one, two. This is going to go feed one leg. This is going to start to feed the other leg. All the way down at the capillary level, gas exchanges are going to take place, and that blood's going to come back. If you look closely, you'll see blue here. You'll see blue here. Those are the iliac veins. Those iliac veins are going to merge together and form the inferior vena cava. Now it's been cut right here, but that inferior vena cava is going to go all the way up here, right up this tube. And again, if I put the heart back in place, you can imagine this going and feeding right into the right atrium. So that's basically bringing deoxygenated blood back from the lower side of your body. 
Now what happens on the upper side of your body? Again, gas exchange is going to take place way out at the capillary level in the arms and up in the head. But what happens here is blood is going to return on the venous system. So here in blue, what you'll see is the left subclavian vein. In blue here is going to be the left internal jugular vein. And on this side, you'll have the right subclavian vein and the right internal jugular vein. Now, because this is coming from the arm and from the head, this subclavian and this jugular is going to form the left brachiocephalic vein. Listen to the name, brachiocephalic. Brachium means arm, cephalo is with reference to the head. So brachiocephalic should make sense on the left side. Same thing here, right subclavian vein, right internal jugular, that's going to form the right brachiocephalic vein. The two brachiocephalics merge together and they form the superior vena cava, which essentially has drained the entire head and arm region on both sides and brought that deoxygenated blood right back to this right atrium. And again, here we go, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk branches out into the pulmonary arteries. And if I pull this away and flip it around in blue, you can see those pulmonary arteries on the heart here. Those are gonna go into the lungs, make their gas exchange, and then come back on these red pulmonary veins, bringing blood back to the left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta for another ride through.